Sanctions on Russia are good, and there should be more of them. I'm saying this as a leftist and, most importantly, as a Ukrainian who actually cares about Russian people too. The making of this video was inspired by this shameless tweet by a Russian Twitch streamer. Here are the main points. Point number one. The West isn't taking away anything that actually belonged to Russia. They have closed some imports and exports, including fossil fuels, banned international transactions for Russia, and frozen the assets of certain Russian oligarchs plus Russian national reserves in Western currencies. Russia isn't entitled to any of that and it shouldn't matter to them anyway. Russian politicians are very much into the LARP that Russia doesn't need the West to survive. They don't need the stupid fat Americans. They don't need the gay rope, as they call it. So now that the actual civilized world has cut them off, it's a great opportunity for them to prove how self-sufficient they actually are. Which they're not. They're not China. They have 140 million people and only a Texas-sized economy to support all of them. Which happens when your country is ruled by fossil fuel oligarchs who think they can live off of selling oil and gas till the end of time. Point number two. Russian government is responsible for everything that happens to their citizens. The West isn't at war with them, and like I said before, they aren't taking away anything they rightfully own. Russia has a lot of options to alleviate any and all hardships that Russian citizens have faced since the West has cut them off. People can't find or afford food? Do the same thing that Europe is doing for Ukrainian refugees, give out free food. Russia is a net grain exporter and has the sixth largest fishing industry among other things. They can manage it. In other areas, well, I guess Russia should have invested in building up their pharma industry and electronics manufacturing, instead of funneling everything into war and propaganda. If they really want those goods and services back, they have an easy solution. They should withdraw the troops off of my fucking land, admit they were wrong, and start negotiating a way to fix all of this mess. Point number three. Russians aren't exactly innocent. Most of them are capable adults who pay taxes to the Russian government that directs those taxes towards painting my people as evil Nazis who like crucifying Russian-speaking children. Even with its tiny economy, Russia is spending around 3 billion US dollars on propaganda each year. A good example of that is Russia Today, a propaganda outlet most beloved by American tankies that receives between a quarter and a half of a billion dollars each year, all of which is taxpayer money. Let's also not forget the fucking war that is happening right now, which is also taxpayer funded. Russian people are complicit in that. And yes, there have always been many people in Russia who disagreed with everything that the Russian government does. But Putin is still there and the war chest has been filled up with money regardless. All of this is not to say that Russian people deserve the hardships that come with sanctions or that Russian people have to be punished in some way. I'm a fucking leftist and a determinist. I oppose all forms of retributive justice and so must every leftist. All I'm saying in this point is that the argument that sanctions are unjustified and must be lifted because they affect innocent Russians is fucking stupid. Point number four. If some Russians get hurt as a result, it is still worth it. Thousands of people have been killed and tens of thousands have been injured on both sides. This includes over 3,000 dead in just Ukrainian civilians. As far as I know, sanctions are the way to stop this that is least likely to provoke nuclear annihilation. They will lead to suffering and maybe even the loss of some Russian lives due to the Russian state's warped set of priorities and general incompetence. But anything more or less leads to even greater death and suffering which is why we need to support this plan of action since it leads to the minimization of harm. Yes, lefties, it's the lesser evil again. Welcome to adulthood. Point number five. Russian people are not a monolith and should not be essentialized as evil. A significant portion of Russians oppose the invasion, especially the young and educated people who live and breathe Western culture. 
At this point, around 15,000 anti-war protesters have been arrested, many people have been beaten, and some have even been tortured in detention. Just like the people who are fighting to protect Ukraine and people who are volunteering to help Ukrainian refugees, Russians who are risking their livelihoods to try and stop the war from within are heroes. We should acknowledge their struggle, if not for just moral reasons, then to at least encourage more Russians to resist the fascists in power. Point number six. Just like Ukraine, Russia too must be rebuilt after the Putin's regime is brought down. We should only view sanctions as a way of stopping the aggression, not a way to punish Russians. After Russia changes leadership, all sanctions must be lifted and the West must start the process of properly bringing Russia into the civilized world, which is something that has been largely neglected so far. First of all, Russian people are the same fucking people as everyone else. They deserve a base level of well-being. Second of all, you cannot erase decades worth of brainwashing and propaganda by bringing an entire nation of people down after the aggression is stopped. Rising living standards and access to education strongly correlate with the adoption of liberalism and leftism. Thirdly, the civilized West also bears responsibility for failing to build bridges with the post-Soviet Russia, just like they are responsible for failing to protect the countries who defied Russia and have since been attacked as part of the continued Cold War. After Russia falls, NATO will lose most of its purpose. So it is only natural to use some of its funding to help the victims of their decades-long standoff become happy and productive members of a more united, civilized world. Anyway, these are the main points. So what's wrong with that tweet? Well, this is a good example for point number three. Commander Ivy was profiting from a Western audience enabled entirely by a Western company, while the government she was funding with her taxpayer money was killing innocent people in different countries and pushing the narrative among Russians that Western people, her audience by the way, are actually stupid evil degenerates. And when her country was rightfully hit with sanctions for murdering thousands of living human beings, she played the victim card. This is why I have zero respect for apolitical people. They obviously see all the fucked up shit that is happening around them, but ignore it, since doing something about it would bring no immediate benefit. And only when politics starts to negatively affect them, they come out of the woodworks to make it about them. But still, I have no ill will towards Commander Ivy. I'm glad she is now one of hundreds of thousands of Russians who have fled the country and no longer have to deal with their fascist government. In conclusion, sanctions on Russia are good and necessary and people dying in war is bad. Hopefully this ends soon so that Russian people get a decent, pro-human government that they deserve Ukraine starts to rebuild and we can all bury and mourn the people we lost. Thank you for watching. Slava Ukraini, Slava Russian activists, Slava Japonii. Arigato gozaimasu.